So, hi, Mark. How are you doing? Hey, hey, Lori. How are you? Good. Welcome to the Art Fest Online chat at Art Fest Ontario. Well, thank you for inviting me. This is kind of cool. Yeah, I'm Lori McDonald from Art Fest Ontario, your host today. And we've got Mark, uh, Mark uh, Paul from uh, Sprucewood Cookies. Well, Sprucewood and made and made cooking very important part of your branding here because every cookie is actually handmade here so so mark i wanted to uh have a little talk with you today about some of your about what you're up to your business and products and uh see what you know what's going on with you so i've known you for quite a few years we and, have yeah i've been he's been an artist favorite for a long time and uh, uh our art fest fans love you and we know that because they uh, buy lots of cookies, right? But yeah, yeah. You but you seem to have a great passion for food. And how did that start? Ugh, boy, um, you know, I think if I go back to the beginning, I remember when I was about I don't know five. My mother told me that I made breakfast for my younger brother every morning around six o'clock, starting with cracking eggs into his crib and <laughs> pouring milk in his crib, and thinking I was. Uh, making his breakfast but you know what some things like anything that's focused as career or passion um, you kind of know it right away unfortunately I ignored my calling for many years and kind of went um, you know pretty much mainstream career with marketing banking finance and but every night that I was working for a bank for example both in Toronto and New York I was going to chef school after I got home from work at 7 p.m., I'd be at chef school from 7.30 to 10.30 every night. And moonlighting as well, bartending and whatever, trying to pay for it all. But I finally kind of gave in and left Wall Street and Bay Street, oh my God, 30 years ago, and opened a restaurant in Coburg of all places, uh, just out of the blue. And of course I'd had good training up until then and good finance background. And the restaurant was a success, and I sold it six years later for a profit, which is highly unusual in the restaurant business. And then I kept, you know, I left that career, went back and got my master's in psych, <clears throat> and found another calling. But I always came back to culinary. Always, it was the true calling. And uh, I guess for the shortbread, we always, you know, we were kind of in a part of the 80s with the restaurant when the Ontario economy went bust. And we decided that if we were gonna to get to customers, we'd have to go to them. So we opened a catering company and we kept the restaurant as well, but people weren't coming in as much because there was not that discretionary income. So I started a catering company and we took food to them and we catered weddings, events. We do a lot of fundraising to this day, actually catering still 35 years later. And I created this crazy cheddar shortbread cookie for cocktail hour and passing them at the bar and whatever event we had. And we had some pretty cool events for some pretty, pretty nice clients, both Toronto, Kingston, Kitchener, North. And uh, people kept asking where they could buy these shortbread that were made with cheddar for cocktail hour. Yeah, and, they are, they're magic. I just absolutely love them. <laughs> savory, is, savory is unique. We were the creators, the first creators of savory almost 40 years ago in Canada, actually in North America. And anyway, so I started selling them out of my back door literally for a year illegally. And then we landed in a fine food shop close to me in Port Hope called Herma's Fine Foods. And from there, two years later, we had 300 stores, but we still, you know, making them by hand with myself and a packager is the tough part. We are staying true to our goal of small batch, high quality artisan, all local ingredients. So that passion that began way back when I was cracking eggs into my brother's crib to today has really kind of been my focus and, and reality. And it's so great you can actually live your own dream or reality each and every day. Today I was in, you know, times have changed, as you know, which has precipitated this great format with ArtFest. But I don't really have any, any kind of help anymore. I can't afford it. And so today was just like 20 years ago, I went in my bakery, phoned and got a couple of orders, turned on my mixer, you know, started mixing 
and packaged and tomorrow I'm delivering the orders. So I'm going right back to like 25 years ago, a single sole proprietor, uh, same passion. Uh, it's a little lonely without having, you know, a helper in there, but it's been, it's remarkable what you can do. I've seen you when you're baking, you know, baking, baking cookies when you had your place in uh, Warkworth. Yeah. yeah, we were, yeah, we were in Warkworth for eight years. Yeah. And so you, you know, you've developed, like you did the cheddar cookie. Uh, then yeah. you've got all kinds of different recipes now. I mean, it, like, how do you develop a new recipe? I mean, it sounds like a simple thing to do if you're a chef or whatever, but I, I think it's actually pretty, probably pretty challenging to really nail it. What's involved in, in making a new cookie recipe? I think it's a really good question because before I just made what I thought I liked. And now I'm actually a member of the Specialty Food Association out of New York, out of Manhattan. And so monthly we get flavor trends, like what's really happening right now in North America, more so than the world, for flavor trends. And certainly we're all leaning to, can you see me there? I can, yeah, did I? Okay, good. Certainly we're all leaning to healthier and, you know, we're leaning to antioxidants and, and healthier ingredients per se. So an ingredient really is always in my head. I probably have about 500 flavors in my head right now, but we also have to test them with the public. In fact, we've used ArtFest. We used ArtFest last August, Labor Day show, to test our new chocolate mint shortbread. We tested it right at your site, handing out samples, and if they loved it, we had temporary packaging. Um, and it really is being able to do an event like yours lets us try out flavors on the public at large, whether it's Kingston, Coburg, um, you know, the distillery right downtown. It's, it's been a, it's just a great kind of venue to do focus groups live. Yeah. Yeah. I have flavors in my head, but we also bounce them off the public before we even launch them into a proper package. Yeah, so I mean, when you talk about trends and ingredients, I mean, I love shortbread cookies. I love butter. It's one, of my, it's one of my favorite things in the world. But that's still considered a healthy food. I know butter kind of got a bit, a bit of a bad rap a number of years ago, but right now people are, have moved back, I think, to, to real butter instead of margarine and all the processed oils. Isn't that? Yeah, yeah. Well, butter, butter, butter is real food. Let's be, and we use local Sterling Creamery, beautiful. Oh. Uh, it's a cooperative creamery still these days. So yeah, butter got a bad rap. Butter is, you know, it's all like moderation. And, you know, the great thing about our shortbread is 90% of the flavors are either low sugar or no sugar. And our carb count is low. So we're both keto friendly and diabetic friendly. It's a unique product that way. Unlike our competitors who use palm oils and use other fats that really are not healthy. Yeah. That's, just, that's not a real shortbread. <laughs> Not really. No. <laughs> I don't think that's a real short bread. Yours are real. I mean, they taste real. They're so they're so good. Yeah. Oh, so, um, I mean, your business has been growing and growing, and you know, the, the demand keeps increasing. And and you've you've expanded uh, a, lot, a couple of years ago and changed your things a bit. What? So, tell me a little bit of what about what that what that meant. Well, when we were in this ch charming village of Workworth, Ontario. We had this old Masonic Lodge that really wasn't a great bakery setting. We outgrew it. It was a bit rickety and we wanted to uh, food safety certify our bakery. So we had to build new. Um, and we chose Coburg because when I was two, my parents bought a farm just north of here and I always wanted to come back to this area. And so we chose Coburg. We bought vacant land and uh, my business partner and partner, Abel, is an architect and designer. We were lucky to have him on staff to design this great space, which I'll send you pictures of later on tonight. Oh, great. And yeah, it's really cool outside and in. And Coburg, we also needed to be closer to the 401 corridor for shipping and to open our little shop so people could find us easier um, and more conveniently. And we needed to upgrade some equipment. I mean, we're still a small batch, right? We're, we're not a manufacturer. We're an artisan producer. We're a local producer. And we're not going to go that route. We could do that. We could have 30 people on hairnets in our building tomorrow or when it's ready. But when the time is right. But that's not going to happen because the product just doesn't lean itself to. When you're doing all natural, small batch, artisan, locally produced and sourced, and all of a sudden, you're just dare, Mr. Christie. You're not what we are. So I still bake every friggin' cookie, still, after all these years. 
And I still find great joy in working in a bakery setting. It's relaxing, it's quiet. You know, bakeries aren't noisy. It's quiet, it smells great, and it's physical. I mean, you're, you're active all day. Mm -hmm. So Coburg was the right place based on just a close enough to major centers like Toronto and Montreal, some of our bigger markets. And 401 Corridor, it was affordable then, it's certainly not now. But yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a good ride. That's great because I know you know a lot of the the uh, food, uh, gourmet food, up and coming uh, producers of gourmet food have new ideas for food, have looked at, at, to you for advice and for guidance and and I uh, you mentioned a few people that you that you uh, helped so I'm just interesting that's a wonderful thing to give back to the community too to help mentor young food enthusiasts so what tell me a little bit about that part. Well, the kind of the nice thing is we have this great retail component at the front of our building. And what I did was I decided it really shouldn't be all about us, that we should include other local producers who yet have, have who have yet to hit the shelf. You know, nothing about labeling, nothing about nutritional, nothing about barcoding, nothing about, you know, quite honestly, sometimes proper sanitation. They have great product, great drink. I know you're invited to the opening, but I've just got to get a date. And we, Lori and I pulled it all together for the end of March, just so you know. And that was all put to bed quite quick, given. Yeah. Oh, crazy, crazy. And we're all, all of us are in the same situation right now where we, you know, we had our, we had our event planned for this past weekend on the, on the big holiday. Yeah. Um, and that's what we, you know, we look forward to it. We love it. That's what we do. And all of a sudden we can't have the show. So I know that it's impacted uh, the artists in a huge way. And, and I know it's that, that's the same thing that's happened to you. How's that affected your business? Well, you know, direct to consumer, not online. Direct to consumer at fine events like yours has, has really become, we are, I was surprised. I thought it was going to be a bit of wholesale here and there. Direct consumer is, is our biggest share of sales. So doing, you know, I realized last year I was in, I was spent 102 nights in hotels traveling to 57 events like yours all over Ontario. And that is our bread and butter. So, you know, if you want to look at numbers, I mean, we're down in revenue 93%. Oh, that's terrible. It is devastating. And I can't imagine other artists who, like me, rely on whether it's an immediate sale at the event or whether it's afterward. We've picked up corporate work. Actually, both Fairmont and Shangri-La Hotels have been ordering. They met us at ArtFest. Oh. It's remarkable who we've met at your shows. Um, on a corporate side, wholesale side, and that was never our intention. It was just to share our craft, right, and sample and, and sell. But um, these, this is a loss.